Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the Acoustic series. In this video, we are going to talk about acoustic scattering. This is a very fundamental topic of acoustic simulation and hence this video will be helpful if you are working with acoustics for your research problem. Before I start today's technical discussion, I would like to make an announcement. We have initiated a service where we help you developing your research problem. If you want to avail this service, write to me in the email ID given in the description box. I'll set up video calls with you and I'll help developing your problem. So let us proceed with today's discussion. We are talking about acoustic scattering. Acoustic scattering means you have a sound wave which is coming and getting scattered on a scatterer and how exactly it is getting scattered in which direction you have more sound wave that you need to quantify and that becomes a physical research problem in most of the cases. So uh, let us uh, talk about today's problem with a schematic diagram. This particular file is taken from Comsol itself. So if you want to uh, avail this particular file, I will give the link in the description box so that you can quickly have this file. So this is the scatterer which is given in the shaded picture. So you can see the scatterer is an ellipse or in three dimension it will be an ellipsoid. So this ellipsoid is the scatterer and the sound wave is coming at an angular direction. So for, for reference they have taken a Cartesian coordinate axis where x and z are the coordinate axis on the plane of the screen. Whereas y is perpendicular or I can say mutually perpendicular to both x and z. So the y is either coming out of the screen or it is penetrating through the screen. So this is in three dimension and the acoustic wave is taken such a way it is basically going in a angular direction making 45 degree angle with both x and z axis. So this is the direction of the sound wave. So if I draw a line it will be helpful. So this is going on the plane of the screen and this is the direction of the sound wave. So how exactly we can define this particular sound wave? Suppose if you want to define this with the vector then the components of your x would be 1 say in the y direction this is in the out of the plane so this direction you will have 0 and in the z direction again you will have 1. So we can define this particular vector by this vector notation and this particular thing we are going to use in our console simulation. You can see this is the wave propagation vector which we have actually taken here. So this is very important where from this wave propagation is coming and in COMSOL simulation language we call it the background wave. So this definition is very much important. So this background wave will, will, will incident on this scatterer and what will happen this particular object will scatter the sound wave in different random directions. So that scattering will be taking place in a three-dimensional 360 degree angle and how much it is getting scattered that we will be quantifying with this console simulation. So for doing this simulation few things few parameters have been taken I'll just try to explain quickly. So Ri is the radius of the sphere that sphere would be taken for defining the solution space. RPML is the perfectly matched layer thickness. This is very important when you are working with our wave, uh, wave equations. Uh, this basically signify the absorbing condition. So there is no wave coming back. So if you have a PML, uh, when wave goes through the PML, then it does not come back by reflection. So this is the PML and this REXT is the distance at which we will be calculating the scattered light intensity. So this will be required for the post-processing or the presentation purpose. I will talk about it. 
F0 is the frequency of the sound wave which we are taking. C0 is the speed of the sound wave. You can, you know, lambda is the wavelength of the sound wave. A, B, C are the same, um, major axis, minor axis of the ellipsoid because our scatterer is an ellipse. So, we will be taking an ellipse. So, initially, let us do our geometry. Actually, this simulation is given in application library of Comsol, but I'll be working few of the I'll be doing few of the steps so that you can visualize it better. So I'm working with the geometry now. So initially we'll go to more primitives and we'll take an ellipsoid and as I have mentioned the length of the axis is R, A, B and C. Those are all defined in the parameter list. So this is the ellipse we have taken. Now we'll be right clicking on geometry. We'll take a sphere. The radius of the sphere would be Ri that is the inner radius plus RPML. RPML is the thickness of the perfectly matched layer. So the entire radius would be Ri plus RPML. So we will be using layers here. A layer will be at the dis distance RPML. What is layer that I have discussed in a separate video, you can look at that particular video. So now if I build selected, you can see two spheres have been created around this scatterer that is an ellipse. Now we can make a difference operator here. So let us take the boolean partitions and difference, uh, difference of the sphere and the ellipse. So for taking the ellipse we have to penetrate into it. For that we will be using this click and hide option. Yeah that has been chosen. I mean it has been hidden. Now we can choose this ellipse. So ellipse has been chosen. Now we do build all. Then we remove all the hidden options and get back to the entire geometry. Now this geometry has been taken and in the entire space we are assuming there is water. So this is the material. So material has been taken from the material library. We need to define the perfectly matched layer in the artificial domain. So this is very important. Whenever you are working with PML, you have to define this PML from the artificial domain option. So I'll I'll actually talk about it in detail how exactly you can do. So let me delete it. Now if you go to the definition option, uh, let me go again. Yeah, in the definition option, if you right click, then you'll be getting option. Yeah, this is the perfectly matched layer and we have to select the PML. So this is the PML. You can see we are choosing the PML. So one by one you can click and select the entire PML. So this PML has been selected. Geometry has been taken. Now what I need to do is let me define the ACPR that is Aqueous pressure acoustics frequency domain. So what I need to do is I need to right click and define the background pressure field. So the background pressure field will be in the in all domain and it will actually neglect the PML. So if you define all domain, it will basically choose domain 5 because PML uh, is already excluded. So whenever you define it from the artificial domain, it will automatically take. So in the background wave, now we have to define the wave which I have discussed here. So if you remember the wave is coming from this direction making an angle 45 degree with both X and Z axis and I have told this is the definition of the wave. So let us put uh, component X as 1 and also component Z as 1 and let us let us define the pressure amplitude as at P0. 
so what is the pressure function basically that also given somewhere in the yeah this is how the background pressure is defined so if you define this uh, 101 it is basically taking the background pressure as this exponential function so you can actually see so if this is the z axis and this is the x axis then your sound wave is going along this direction and it has a this is a kind of wave it is going like this and here is your scatterer so it is getting scattered by the scatterer and what is happening that we will be calculating and the total pressure field is then will be the summation of the background pressure field and the scattered pressure field so initially you only have the background pressure then it it interferes with the scatterer it, it generates scattered wave so now you have the background plus the scattered wave if you sum it up you get the total pressure wave so this is the logic behind the simulation now I have defined the background pressure wave now let us define one option which is very important and that is background pressure field so from this definition what we will be doing we will be basically calculating how the scattering has taken place and how exactly the scattered wave distributed so this has to be defined manually so we can do it from here actually Two back oh no, no this is not this is a background pressure field by mistake I have taken so right clicking on it so basically we want to take exterior field calculation not the background pressure field because this is the way how exactly we calculate the scattered pressure field after the simulation so for this what we have to do we have to choose this boundary so along this boundary we need to calculate the pressure yeah so we have defined it yeah now yes it has been done mostly so I, I hope this will run there is a problem with domain 5 in the distribution yeah I have resolved it actually this is this would be your domain so we have defined it again so you can see 9 10 11 12 so those are the you can see in the green when I am changing so this would be your boundary layer and we have taken swept mesh in the entire domain so now it should run let me click on compute yeah the simulation is running yeah this is done almost yeah so now uh, let us uh, look at the total field so as you as you know we, we, we have defined the field in the x and z direction so initially let us look at the x z plane what is happening at x z plane so it is here so you can say it's a kind of in an angular direction you have this I mean the pressure distribution now if you look at the scattered field so this is how the scattered fields look like so it does not have any correlation I mean it's similarity with the incident background field so the scattered field will depend on the scatterer so here the scatterer is the ellipse now let us see the background field so the background field and total field is almost similar and 
as the scattered field intensity is very less you can see the scattered field in intensity goes up to 0.3 pascal whereas the background field intensity is up to 1 and that is why even if you sum up the scattered and the background it remains like the background field but we are more interested in the scattered field and then uh, what we will be doing we will be plotting those scattered fields along different directions so uh, initially let us look at uh, other planes so as you see I have mentioned several times like our incident light is in the XG plane so what we will be doing so we have three different planes so we will not look at the scattered light at XG plane rather we will look at XY plane and YZ plane so these are the two planes which are not coinciding with the plane of the incident light and that is why we are more interested in the scattering at those two planes so the idea is you have a three dimensional object I am throwing light from not light the sound from this direction and I want to see what is happening in, uh, in the other planes because this is a three dimensional space so let's see so this is in the XY plane you can see in the XY plane we have a symmetric distribution of the scattered wave so we can again go to the scatter field and let us choose the XY plane yeah you can see in both the direction it is almost similar now let us look at YZ plane so you can see in YZ plane it looks like this at the bottom you have more intensity and at the top you have less so let us look at yeah this one YZ plane okay it has been plotted I mean the opposite thing has been plotted so we can actually replace this uh, it can be done from here radiation pattern if we make it minus 1 I hope it will reverse yeah so I mean uh, the ultimate idea is in one side you have more intensity compared to the other side now we can actually look at the three dimensional distribution of the scattered wave so this is how the scattered wave looks like and this is very important because sometimes we you need to design a, a scatterer where you actually optimize the intensity of scattered light so our our target should be uh, to design a scatterer where we have we can have intensity of the scattered wave based on our requirement so that could be one of the problems i may be discussing this kind of problems in uh, in recent future so stay tuned stay tuned to the channel and also subscribe to this channel because this will give us more motivation to upload videos thank you